The following events were recorded as they happened at the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto. In this episode of Little Miracles, Sarah's brain surgery and Jocelyn's new heart is tested for rejection. Thirteen-year-old Sarah suffers from devastating epileptic seizures, which prevent her from leading a normal life. Her doctors feel she may benefit from radical brain surgery to control the seizures. Hi. What we're going to be doing, Sarah, is we're going to be measuring your brain waves as we stimulate um, a nerve that's on your wrist. Okay? So we're going to put this red cap on you, and then we'll have you lie on the bed, and we'll stimulate your hands, and then we'll measure your brain waves. Now what we're going to do is fill each of the electrodes that are in your cap with some jelly. Okay, and that just helps us pick up the brain waves better. Can you feel it cold? Feel it? Yeah, I can feel it. Surgery involves mapping Sarah's brain to find the trouble spots causing her epilepsy. They may have to remove a part of her brain. So we're going to start, you're going to feel this a little, like a fuzzy heartbeat, sort of in your left uh, wrist there. Can you feel that? Yeah. Yeah? Kind of, okay. There is no guarantee this surgery will work, and she could be left with permanent brain damage. Hi, Sarah, this is Katie. And you can guess what happened to Katie. Hi, Sarah. Hi. This is Sarah. Katie had her operation. Isn't she looking great with her short yes. hair? Because, of course, every girl worries about what, Sarah? Yeah, her hair yeah. was the same and exactly. Yeah, my hair to grow. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what, Sarah? You don't have to comb it. I don't want them to cut yeah, my hair. Yeah. I want to keep my hair. My hair. I, I couldn't like believe how fast it was growing when they took the wrap off. Mm -hmm. Well, there's the pictures of her brain. Yeah. These are my brain yeah. pictures. <laughs> yeah, and there's the grid. Oh, that's a grid. Oh. Yeah. That's yeah. The grid yeah. Do the meds make you tired? No, the seizure does because oh, okay. I'm knocked out after. Yeah. She's Two to four hours you fall asleep. Wow. <laughs> Maybe next. Five boys, they were making fun of me. And I said, no, I can't take any more of this. So I went to the teacher and I told on them up to now they don't make fun of me again. That's good. Katie's had problems with that too. Yeah. One kid called her seizure salad. Six-month-old Jocelyn recently had a heart transplant. Her first biopsy will determine if anti-rejection drugs are helping her body accept the new heart. A tube called a PIC line will be inserted into Jocelyn's hand so her care team can easily give medications. CC and a half. Four and a half CC. Right. Can we have a little green needle? There you go. The pick line. It's like an ID, but it's much longer. It allows them to give drugs that would otherwise would destroy veins. Okay, I'm gonna prep. Let's make sure. That we just put this wire in. So they obviously put the face maker in yet. Perfect. We'll have like the uh, new pick line and I will just use the peripheral IV. Yeah. Okay, well, since this is the first time I've seen you, sir, I just want to um, ask some basic information and then we'll talk about what we planned for you, okay? Oh. How frequently are your seizures happening now? Um, once, twice a week. Once or twice a week. Been through this long process where you've been monitored and there's a distinct possibility that you would be helped if we uh, tried to map out where the seizures are coming from. Because we have to know what part of the brain controls things um, as well as where the seizures are coming from so that we know what we can take out safely without injuring Sarah think that your chances of being benefited by this procedure is 65 to 70 percent. 
I, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody because of the invasive nature of what we do. You're inflicting significant injury on part of the brain. I mean, the long-term goal is to heal it, but short-term, it's going to seize because that's how the brain responds to injury. So these are your concerns, huh? Wow, I guess so. Okay, you want to know how long you'd be in the hospital? Um, probably a week or ten days. Maybe two weeks. And will they shave your head? I think they will. And Dr. Rutka will remove a big portion of the skull, like from here back to here. It'll be, uh, it'll be right from the front of your scalp all the way back to the back. And then we lay, so he exposes the brain. And we lay the electrodes directly on the surface of the brain. And then we put the skull cap back. We have to be certain that these seizures are coming only from one side of the brain. Because if the seizures are coming from both sides of the brain, then there's no surgery. Take a short for sheath and dilator. Stop, pull back. I just want to let the balloon take it from the. Okay, push out a bit. Get her the heart started. Well, when they're checking her bladder or not, she was just kicking. I'm going to take it here so that we don't get a lot of wasted blood. Um, no, you know what? I want to leave the sheath here, do the biopsy, and we'll get the pressures on the way in. Let's have a quick look here. I've got a feeling the anatomy's a bit funny all around. Sarah has had seizures for the last four or five years, but uh, her most recent seizures are three types. Type A, she has occipital lobe seizures, which are seen to be occipital lobe uh, flashing lights. That's the first uh, signal that uh, a seizure is coming on. And after that, she'll often have left leg shaking. Her leg actually will be extended and kick out. And then her third type is uh, secondary generalized, but it's interesting. It can be with or without loss of consciousness. Most often, it's full body shaking. She will go down quite quickly, almost a drop, shake all over. She can talk throughout it, feels like she's choking, but also feels like she can't breathe and is, is quite frightened. It's, it's a pretty powerful um, seizure and it's very, very frightening for her. So we have about an hour together for follow-up. And what's happening with the seizures? And She had, uh, had four, last four, week. four seizures last week. She got a seizure in the pool, which was for me. With my sister, yeah. They, her and her friend, they had to pull me out of the pool. Okay. And they, I was in the shallow end. Luckily, I wasn't in the deep end because the pool that I was in, it goes down like this. Uh -huh. So if I was in the middle, it was deep, 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 and they couldn't have got me out. And nobody was home at the house. See, I remember. <laughs> Let's talk about remembering. Do you think you're getting into more problems with your memory? Some things. Like what? Like if my mom rem reminds me of like, just one thing that I would remember it. Okay. So usually with just a little prompt, yeah. things come back out again, <laughs> okay. Heavier now? Yeah. Is that it? Is that it up? I'm gonna give sister a turn, eh? Yeah. Is she bigger than last time you held her? No. No? Oh, I think she Come is. She weighs more. She's a big girl now. There. There. Oh, good job, Danielle. That's her favorite bunny. Do you know what they did to Jocelyn? What did they do? Gave her a new heart. Where is her other heart in the garbage? Well, I don't know. I didn't ask them what they did with it. Just roam around with your... Oh, yeah. She just looks so much more healthy. Look like her. Last time we saw her, she was just, just nothing. Dry looking yeah. skin. So, here we are. Day 11. Yeah. And today was her first biopsy. 
so we will know the results later today. Um, so you know, with each of the biopsies, there is grading with a 3A. That's where the cells have actually attacked the heart to the point where there's actually a little bleeding. That's what we call a little bit more severe rejection. And with that, she would be treated for it. Does that damage the heart? It doesn't damage the heart, but what happens is the cells, if it's bad enough, um, they hemorrhage, and that will heal over time, but it won't damage her heart function. So with Jocelyn now, you know, it's, it's going to be a huge adjustment for you guys because we're really dealing with Jocelyn living with a chronic illness and living with transplantation. And as you know, transplantation is not a cure but it definitely gives a second chance at life. And, yeah. and that's the hardest thing for parents because she may have a bad rejection today and yet she looks wonderful. Mm -hmm. And that's very, very common with all of the heart transplants. They're running around, they're playing, they're active, and they have bad rejections. Mm -hmm. That's why we do the biopsies. The prednisone is the drug that we would probably want to take her off the soonest. Um, it's a steroid and it has a lot of side effects. And by weaning her off the prednisone, it's gonna be dependent on her biopsy results. Okay. We're gonna have to get a wig for after the surgery. My hair is gonna be all off like my brother's. That's, that's kind of good though, cause I always wanted curly hair. So look, I could get a curly hair one till my hair goes back. <laughs> the roughest part of today because it's very real and right now it's really stressful. So hang in there. You guys have done great this morning. We're almost there, almost time. Just hang in there a few minutes longer, okay? So the, the plan today is to, uh, to get information and the way we do that is to uh, place this grid on the surface of the brain for several days and afterwards you'll go to the intensive care unit and following that uh, as we monitor and find out where the seizures are coming from we'll plan the next uh, step of the operation which will be to remove the abnormal portion of the brain that's causing the seizures. I guess you know that um, you have to have a bit of a haircut. I mentioned that to you, right? So I'm very sorry that we have to do that, but that's the only way that we can actually do this safely and uh, eliminate the risk of infection. But the nice thing about hair is that it does uh, grow back, especially at your age. It'll grow back much faster than at my age, so. Hello, my girl. What you doing at? She looks good. She, she looks really good. And she tolerated the extubation really well. Mm -hmm. And, um, her first biopsy is great. great. There's absolutely um, no rejection. Oh, so you know we do the biopsies fairly frequently initially, and um, if we see rejection on one of them, that's okay. We can deal with that and we can treat that. Um, and the initial period is the most likely period that rejection will happen. Yeah. But it's always good to start, start with, with a, a zero. zero. Yeah. Do that. Okay. Don't look so grouchy. That was good news. Good girl. Such a big uh, craniotomy? No. That's really enormous. Almost ready for you. 
the brain look normal to you? No, it's, a, it's an abnormal CSF collection. I'll show you in a second. Okay. Okay, Carter, let me just throw some light on here for you. This is CSF space that we're going to have to uh, either stimulate through or see what kind of recordings we can get across there. It was obvious right. when we were doing a three dimensional cut that she has significant atrophy on the right side. Pick up. Yes. <laughs> Quit talking. <laughs> she's, she's Jocelyn, Jocelyn, put up your hand if you lose Jocelyn. Yes. Put it high, higher. <laughs> she wants your bunny. Ready? There. Can I take another picture? <laughs> oh, look at her sucking her thumb again. Yeah, I know, yeah. She likes that little thumb. <laughs> Am I allowed to what? Come. Come where? Yeah. Home? Yeah. I can't. We'll give her kisses too, okay? It's only three months now, Danielle. <laughs> only three months. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Want to give her another kiss? Yeah. She wants to see oh, okay. her big sister again. Yeah. Give that a kisses. Bye bye. Kisses? Just stares. <laughs> Okay, there you go. <laughs> okay, let's go then. Love you too. You guys have fun. Okay, see you, Grandpa. Okay, see ya. Okay, see ya. Okay, see ya. Yeah. Okay. No. I don't know if that's it, Carter, but I'll try here first. Yeah. Uh, we can always jump to this one if yeah. it's not. All right, we'll see. We're stimulating the hand and the uh, recording from the brain. And this is where the electrodes are. So this is front, this is back. So what we, th we think this is the central sulcus, so we think the somatosensory hand is here. Okay, ready? On. Stem on. You see the hand twitching. Ah. Ready? Me? Mm -hmm. Are you ready to go home today? Are you ready to go home today? Yes, we'll go home to our new house, eh? Yeah. Hello, girls. Hi. Today is the big day. Yes. So, good news, biopsy, no rejection. Yes. So number good. two, Yeah. we'll probably do another one in about four to five weeks. Gorgeous girl, I'm gonna miss you. I'll see you in clinic. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll get her a stroller and I'm out of here. Jocelyn and Regina move to a nearby apartment. It's their temporary home while Jocelyn's progress is monitored by the hospital. What do you think? No kids here today, just us. Jocelyn! Jocelyn and her heart will have to be carefully watched throughout her life. She is recovering and continues to do well. So now we know where motor hand is and the somatocentric hand is. Okay, let's have the grid next. Well, that's a big space. Now we'll take the whole thing. And take care of some business here. So what concerns me is this is that area of atrophy, and so she's got a big subarachnoid space here between the electrode and the brain compared to the rest of the brain. Okay, that's it. So we need to go talk to the folks. She's doing fine. We did everything that we talked about. There's, uh, we covered this whole part of the brain and the wires are coming out the front. So we've identified those two areas of function and um, 
Dr. Rudka just drill a hole here and just put in the two strips on this side to be sure that seizures aren't coming from both sides. We did find an area of abnormality when he did when he uncovered the brain. There's a part of the brain here that's much smaller than it should be. I don't know what that means. But we'll have to do the mapping now. If the seizures are leading from there, we should be able to see them. We'll just have to wait and see. Okay. Right, if you like this addressing, it's all yours, got your name all over it. With the electrode grid temporarily in place, the first surgery is complete. The team will now begin to map Sarah's brain to find the source of her seizures. They will try to ensure that if they must remove part of her brain, vital brain functions won't be affected. On the next episode of Little Miracles, mapping Sarah's brain and Christopher's hand surgery.